bouncer. Never saw him ball a bouncer. But the, the chap who, as I'm emerging as a, a young, promising batsman, was the fella who I would eventually take over from. And, and again, a wonderful cricketer, England opener called Jeff Puller. Now, Jeff Puller would know that this young lad, left-hander, is going to take over. That, that didn't deter him from showing me the ropes. He was a senior professional, Jeff Puller, who I would say looked after me and, and technically just got me right. You know, the coaches were there, as you will probably come on to this, to, to administer and to give the players every facility to do the job. We'll come on to that later. But he was a senior professional and the senior professionals gave you knowledge. You were getting knowledge all the time from senior professionals, traveling in cars with them, playing on uncovered pitches on how to play in certain situations. And then the funniest bloke in the team by a <laughs> distance, the funniest man I've ever, ever met, <laughs> Dave Green. D.M. Green played for Lancashire and he played for Gloucestershire. The sharpest wit, the lad who would pick the telegraph crossword up and finish it in 20 minutes, half an hour. But the sharpest wit of anybody and he was the life and soul of the dressing room and he kept everybody in stitches. He was a wonderful, wonderful character. And Bumble, he was a fine player, wasn't he? He, he wanted to hit the first ball for a boundary. He thought that these fellas, they're going to be as stiff as boys, and, and most of the time he'd run down and hit the first ball. Have a, and he, David Green, don't forget, in, I'm going to guess, 1963, I'm going to guess 1963, scored 2,000 runs and didn't get 100. <laughs> That's amazing, isn't it? Quite extraordinary, extraordinary. Um, but uh, Bumble, great characters, and it comes through the book all the time through, that was obviously early career, and um, senior professionals then played a, played a huge part, and almost more of a part than head coach. Uh, I mean, was there someone who perhaps influenced you more than anyone else, or encouraged you more than anyone else in those early, early days? Well, Jeff Puller, definitely, but yeah. we, had, we had a wonderful coach, a wonderful fella. And, you know, I'm talking in the mid 60s here. I think, I, I think this is a wonderful story. That, that two seasons ago, Glenn Chapel, who's in the, the coach at Lanks now, they, they had an out day and went to an out ground for training. They went to a, a, a wonderful facility, uh, West Orton Cricket Club, which is an excellent facility. And they went there to train. And he asked me to go along and, and chat to the players. And so I, I chatted about coaching and dealing with players and culture of the team, that the players themselves decide what the culture of the team is and so on. And I got on to my formative years as, as to, to my first coach at Lancashire Cricket Club. <laughs> and he was a wonderful man. And he was head-hunted by the club, by the committee. He was head-hunted, which was a term unheard of in the 60s. They went after this guy. He was the co coach at Worcestershire County Cricket Club. And they were successful in getting this man to come and be the coach at Lancashire. And in the 1920s, he scored a 1,000 runs in May. Wonderful, eccentric chap called Charlie Hallows. Wonderful man, Charlie. <laughs> but they head-hunted him from Worcester and prized him away at the ripe old age of 74. <laughs> he was 74 when he came to Langs. And so I told Chapel two years ago, you just, you just be on your metal because I'll be after your job in a couple of years. <laughs> <laughs> so, well, I mean, it's interesting, though, Bumble, back, back in the 60s, what the, the role of coach um, was, a quite, was only just developing, wasn't it? It was that the teams tended to be run more, to put me right if I'm wrong, but more by the captain and mm -hmm. senior players. And yeah. obviously there probably was a head coach or someone who had influence or put a touch on it. 
but very, very different from the development of coaching and management now. Yeah, and to come to the time when you and I were involved with England, with Mike Latherton as captain of the team, that I would see my job as coach to facilitate and to bring on board other coaches. I would be the head coach. I would bring in specialist coaches, Alan Knott, uh, Bob Cotton, Graham Gooch, to work with the players. And almost like a football manager these days, I would oversee things and I would um, organise things and make sure everything was in place for Michael Atherton and Alex Stewart. They were captains at that time. Now, I didn't see it my place to tell Atherton, do this, do that, because I would have got short shrift. That's the way that, that it was when I was coming through. The head coach would organise, facilitate. Other coaches would work the team. Yes. And, you, you, you know, your senior players and, and thinking of our time, I would, I would understand that Angus Fraser, Darren Goff, Dominic Court, Dean Headley would get, they would, we would encourage them to get together, uh, which they did, and talk about bowling. So they were senior players talking about the business of fast bowling. And the same would happen with yes. Graham Booch and the batsman and, and Alan Knott would, would be with the wicket keepers. And, uh, you know, I think that, that it's evolved that now the coach has got a lot more say and a lot more importance in, in the present day's cricket. Yeah. One of the, the, the great people who I loved very dearly, and I, I know you loved very dearly, who, who captained Lancashire uh, in the 60s, early 70s, 70s, you put Jack me right, Bond. Jack Bond. Yeah. Um, I loved Jack Bond and, and he did some umpiring as well. And uh, uh, so far as I can remember, he wasn't a brilliant player himself. He was a useful player, but he had something within the leadership skills that was special. Jack was a leader of men. He was as honest as the day is long. He's, in my opinion, one of the greatest players ever to play for Lancashire because he moulded a team. Yes. He gave the county a success. We were young players coming through. We would go through brick walls for Jack Bond because he was unselfish, very honest man, and he cared. He was a man who cared. And yes. he had his sense of humour, um, quite a religious man. He'd had a lot of, uh, or some tragedy in his life uh, when he lost his son uh, in the early 20s to a car crash. Um, Jack was special to all of us, without a doubt, he was special to all of us. And in that time when we were in Gillette Cup finals year after year after year uh, down at Lords, you know, Jack was really at the forefront of that. He yeah. was great fun. He was wonderful company, but he, he looked after us all. He really did. But it's interesting, Bumble, because I mean, I'm not just saying this, but you have sort of done everything within the world of cricket. You've been captain of Lancashire. You've been done umpiring. Uh, you've been a successful coach, broadcaster, communicator. You've done it all. And yet, just coming back to Jack, uh, the, the concept of leadership balanced with coaching and, and management, it was clear to me in his era that he really was the, the key element in a successful operation at that stage. Mm -hmm. And you've, you've done both. You've been captain, you've been coach, you've also umpired. But the relationship and balance between captaincy, leadership and coaching and the coach is quite a delicate balance and still is a delicate balance um, to, get that, uh, to get that balance right. Um, how, how do you, how do you, I mean, you've seen it all and you've done it all, really. Um, uh, how would you see that balance? Well, you, you'll be the same from the jobs that you have done at Arundel and uh, as captain of Sussex, that uh, you, 
at times you're slightly distanced from the team. Yeah. The, there is um, important that there's a mutual respect um, on both sides that, you know, sometimes you will be with people who you wouldn't socialise with, but you respect what they do within the team and within the environment, whether it be playing or management. So I think trust is so important that, that yes. people will trust you. And so, you know, if you boil it down to honesty, trust and respect, but sometimes you've just got to be slightly distanced uh, from the team. Um, but knowing that delicate time, as you, you mentioned, when, when you can join in, you know, you can have a yeah. bit of fun. You know, there are, there are times when there's a bit of despair going around and, and you're, <laughs> you're looking around you're looking around at, at 18, 20 people and think, well, he needs a bit of help. You know, somebody, somebody like Darren Goff. Yes. You don't even worry about it. No, you, don't, you don't worry about Darren at all. He, he'll be there tomorrow, hail, rain or shine. And, and you can be as um, abrupt with him as you like. But some, you might get a lad who's a quite delicate soul. You know, who, who needs an arm round him? Somebody like Andrew Caddick, who was a wonderful bowler, fantastic bowler, but he, he might need a bit of cajoling. And every now and again, he might need a bit of a, a belt. He might need a, a kick. And so there's that. Yeah. It, it, the, the, the joyous thing about being in management and coaching is can you get it right most of the time? Because you won't get it right all the time. You just won't. It's impossible to get it right all of the time. But you can strive to get it right most of the time. Now, Bumble, who and let's 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 think of one or two players. This, uh, as I say, the book is is all about characters and people throughout your life and career. And I know that those uh, listening now, they'd love to hear about some of your abs they don't have to be the best cricketers necessarily but your favorite characters your maybe your favorite batsman or batting character or bowler or fielder or sort of mad character like Derek Randall now I'm not yeah. suggesting him at all but those, those sort of wonderful characters who'd, who'd be who would you pinpoint as real favorites Fred Truman <laughs> He was, Fred was outrageous. You, to, to play against Fred uh, was an event in itself. And then he, he didn't live far from, from me in, in Lancashire, Fred. <laughs> and we did, I did a theatre tour with Fred and Graham Gooch. And I, I, you know, Fred and I spent loads of time together. And then during that era of after dinner speaking, I would do loads with Fred. He was outrageous. Yeah. He was a, a curmudgeon. He, he was typical Yorkshire. Nobody else could play the game at all. <laughs> and certainly nobody ever bowled as fast as him. He was wonderful, wonderful company. Um, you, I'm, you know, I, I miss Fred. I really miss Fred. Gary Sobers is the best player and somebody who I really looked up to, and it's marvellous when you go to Barbados and you bump into Gary still. Fantastic cricketer, Viv Richards. A lovely, lovely fella. But what a presence. What a presence, Viv Richards, when he walked onto the cricket field. Viv Richards, when he walked on... I used to look at Viv and thinking, crikey, I wish I could have walked like that. I'd have got <laughs> thousands more runs if I could have just walked like that. Brian... <laughs> So there's a pattern here of the, the three best batsmen that I've seen are Gary Sobers, Viv Richards, Brian Lara, not in any particular order. The best England batsman yeah. I've seen, which is you and I can discuss this, the best England batsman that I've seen, and I've seen them all, I've seen them all, Kevin Peterson. Now, yeah. I don't Peterson. I won't, I'd, 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 I'd say hello, how are you? Nice to see you, but... We've never sort of engaged, but he was in the job that I did or I do recently. He got me on the edge of my seat as a commentator. I was on the edge of my seat 
crikey, how can this chap do that? Unbelievably tall. And the man, the one man, John, who he reminds me of from a different era is Ted Dexter. Kevin Peterson reminds me of Ted Dexter, a big commanding presence and a wonderful flow of the back and somebody who could do things that other players didn't actually do. So there's just a few there, just a, a, a few. Uh, well, you obviously modelled yourself on Gary Sobers, by the way. Yeah, of course. So we've all, we've, we've got that. And uh, I like the, the comparison, Ted Dexter, and the way, because he, he was my hero, um, yes. the way he struck the ball. Yeah. And Kevin Peterson as a striker, yeah. of the ball and of course I was always hugely jealous of anybody who could strike a ball yeah. uh beautifully yeah. but as well as those there were quite there, there have been a lot of really fine overseas players when overseas mm. players started coming into the game and obviously you at Lancashire had some wonderful overseas cricketers uh, and and there were uh, many of them littered around the counties having of some of them previously played, I think, in the Lancashire leagues. Uh, what about the overseas players who you, you've, you've enjoyed being with or characters there? Well, Clive Lloyd and Farouk Engineer were our first overseas players, but we had one before. We had one before. Sonny Ramadin. Sonny oh, Ramadin yeah. played for Lancashire. And, and, and Sonny's in his 90s now and he's still around. Uh, Wazi Makram was, you know, I, I was at Lancashire at that time as coach. He, he was very, very special. Still is. Really special man. And w what a performer. I think if anybody is picking a, a World eleven, Akram gets in it. Uh, and again, a colossus of a man, a huge man. Yeah. And he would, from a, from a coaching point of view, he would announce himself. And, and yeah. he, would, he would come to sessions um, and he would just say, I will bowl for one hour. And, he, and that's exactly what he would do. And you'll have been in this situation where the coach comes out and, and there's a, a huge bag of cricket balls and the players start mourning and rucking. Look at these, coach. We can't bowl with these. These are rubbish. But have we got... <laughs> yeah, yeah, have we got... The, Wazim... Wazim used to go into the bag and rummage in the bag and come out with the worst ball you could ever see <laughs> and do this reverse swing business with the worst ball. And then he, he would work with, so we're getting back to senior pro, he would work with Ian Austin, Glenn Chapel, Peter Martin. Right, this is what you do. This is the wrist position. This is the thumb position. And you go a bit wider and do this and you do that. And so, yeah. you know, it, it, it's a skill and it's a hand-me-down skill, which would, from Pakistan's viewpoint, would be from Sarfras to Imran to Wakar to Wazim. It's a hand-me-down situation. Um, and so overseas players within the game uh, have been fabulous. I always remember the first real what I would call the real quick man. And it went round county cricket like wildfire. Have you come across this guy? He's rapid. You, no, no, you, no, when do we play them? He, no, make no mistake, we played them last week. This guy's rapid. Andy Roberts. <laughs> Andy Roberts. And, and again, what a fantastic man. What a lovely, lovely man, Andy. Never said a word, did nothing to say. And all this present day of fast ball is going larrikin away and so on. The West Indies boys, Malcolm Marshall, you know, you don't get any better than Malcolm Marshall. Andy Roberts, Michael Holding, never said a word. They might look at you, they might give you a stare, never said a word, just, we're just going to get you out. Joel yeah. Garner, oh my God, Joel Garner. I, I thought... <laughs> When Joel Garner came in to bowl at me, I had absolutely no game plan. As soon as his front foot came up like that, I thought, this guy's going to tread on me. <laughs> <laughs> I had no game plan whatsoever. Um, and he, he, again, such a, a fabulous blow.